What is up YouTube? I'm Will and you're watching Northwest Aqua Hobby. If you're new here, why don't you do me a huge favor and if you like this content, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So that's my shameless plug for the video. Let's go ahead and dive into the content. Today's video is about a very contentious topic in the aquarium hobby and that is water changes. How often do you do them? How much water should you change when you do change the water? That kind of stuff. I do 100% water changes 40 times a week. That's not enough though. All right, I'm just kidding there guys, but no joke though, I'm probably gonna get shamed for this um, video, but you know what? This channel is about being honest and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do with my tanks and surprise, it's not much. All right, so here we have my pride and joy. This is my 29 gallon tank. I have one fairly large electric blue Akara in here. His name is Blue if you are new to the channel. He's kind of like my uh, mascot, if you will. Super healthy. I've had him for a couple years now. Uh, the tank has been up and running for, oh uh, man, I don't even know, three or four months now at least. And guess how many water changes I've done in this tank? The answer is about two. Now, before you harp on me too much, take a look at the amount of floating plants that I have in here. Also take a look at this golden pothos, which I have growing immersed, and the roots are extending down into the water column. All of those plants are doing work for me. They're taking out uh, ammonia, nitrite, nitrates, uh, heavy metals, all other, well, not all other toxic chemicals, but lots of toxic chemicals from the water column are being extracted by those floating plants. In fact, they're doing such a good job at extracting chemicals from the water column that I actually have to dose fertilizer in this tank every single day. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green. Uh, I do one pump of Easy Green in this tank every morning and that seems to maintain a parts per million of nitrate um, at about 20 or so, maybe 20 or 20 to 30 parts per million of nitrate. And that's kind of my target for maintaining healthy plant growth. So that's like spot on. Blue is ridiculously happy in this tank. He's always begging for food. And you know what? There's like no algae right now because the tank is, well, perfectly balanced. And here we have another example. Um, once again, I've got some pothos growing in the aquarium. There's three stems in there. And take a look at this root mass that's growing down into the water column. Um, that's essentially the only plant that I have growing in this tank. I have some uh, rummy nose tetras, and then I have one pretty large um, Siamese algae eater in there along with a bunch of snails. I don't dose fertilizer in this tank whatsoever. Um, however, I basically never do water changes because the parts per million of nitrate, uh, ammonia nitrite, basically remain at zero. And that's 100% due to the fact that pothos is such an efficient sponge for such chemicals. Now, this video is not meant to say that you don't have to do water changes. In fact, that's gonna vary widely depending on whether or not you have plants in your aquarium, how big the aquarium is, how many fish you have in the aquarium. Uh, are you dosing fertilizers? Is there a lot of waste built up? How big is your filter? All those questions are gonna go into whether or not you need to do water changes, um, how big of water changes, and at what frequency. What I can tell you is from personal experience, and that has to do with the fact that Floating plants are an excellent sponge of um, nutrients within the water column. If you have a lot of floating plants or any other kind of plants really growing in your tank, then those are gonna be doing a lot of work for you and they're gonna actually kind of negate the need for doing um, water changes at least that often. What I would suggest is that you monitor your aquarium, do water quality testing on a regular-ish basis, make sure that your nitrates aren't getting too high, make sure you don't have ammonia spiking or nitrite spiking, any of those things. Um, use that kind of as an indicator for you. And also, of course, watch the health of the fish. If they're looking lethargic, 
if their colors are subdued, if they're, you know, just kind of hanging out in one area, if they're not eating, all that kind of stuff, it might be time for a water change. Um, obviously you want to try to avoid that because that's stressing your fish out. Um, so it's good to test your water quality. That way they don't have to put your fish through excess stress. Um, try and catch things early in other words. But I gotta say guys, in my personal opinion, I do think that the aquarium hobby is kind of crazy for water changes. And to be quite honest, I think that it is um, in a lot of cases way more work than it's worth. And to be quite honest, a waste of water really. So guys, in summary, I think that the amount of water that you need to change and the frequency of water changes is going to vary widely depending on your personal setup. Um, if you do have plants in your aquarium and lots of them, then you can actually get away with doing very few water changes at all. Um, but like I said, it's gonna depend on your own personal setup. If you like this video, why don't you give a thumbs up for Blue back there? He likes those. And you know what? I'll catch you in the next video.